What's the best way to smoke ribs on a drum smoker? Horizontally on a grate or vertically on rib hangers? We're gonna find out in this video, so let's get smoking. Welcome to the Smoke Lab, guys, the show where I do crazy barbecue experiments you would never do at home so you can learn from my trial and error. In a previous video, I smoked ribs on my Oklahoma Joe's Bronco drum smoker horizontally on the top rack of the smoker. And a lot of viewers said, hey, Steve, you big dummy, that's not how you smoke ribs on a drum smoker. You have to hang them vertically. That's the best way to smoke ribs. And I thought, really? Is that really the best way? When you smoke ribs vertically hanging down, you have one half of the rack of ribs on almost touching the coals, they're so close. So it occurs to me that one half of that rack of ribs is gonna get really crispy and overcooked, while the other side of the rack is not gonna see a lot of heat, and you're gonna get a lot of uneven cooking, and it's not gonna be really ideal. But having said that, I've never tried it out, and a lot of people swear by it, and they say that all of the fat dripping off of the vertically hung ribs drips down onto the coals and creates this incredible flavor. So I'm gonna test it out in this video by smoking ribs two ways. Two racks I'm gonna do horizontally, on the drum smoker and two racks I'm going to hang vertically and we're going to see which ribs are better. So for the horizontal ribs, I seasoned them with Spiceology Sasquatch BBQ Rib Eruption, really good rub from Spiceology that I like on ribs. And while they soaked up that rub, I lit my Bronco drum smoker using my Oklahoma Joe's charcoal starter. You can see that I used briquettes here. It doesn't really matter what you use. I just use briquettes because I have them on hand. You can use lump charcoal if you want. Anyway, I lit them with wood inter dispersed throughout them to provide some smoke flavor. And after the coals were just barely lit, I put the deflector plate back in. I placed a water pan on top of it. You can't see it here, but I filled the water pan. And then I closed the lid and left the vents wide open to preheat. Now, because I'm a detail-oriented science weirdo, I'm going to weigh the ribs because we're going to compare the moisture loss of both methods to see if there's a difference. And now I'm heading back out to the Bronco. When it hits 200 degrees, I'm shutting the intake vent almost all the way down to position one, and that will slowly roll up the temp to lock in around 250 degrees, which will be our cooking temperature. Now I put the ribs on the Bronco and wait, WTF is that thing. That, my friends, is a wet bulb thermometer, basically a temp probe stuck in a sponge that kind of wicks moisture up from a water reservoir as it dries out and evaporates. The wet bulb thermometer measures the temperature that water is evaporating in the smoker at any given time, and that has a massive effect on how juicy your barbecue turns out. It's basically a proxy for how much moisture is in the smoking environment, and therefore it has an impact on how much evaporation is gonna happen in your meat and how dried out it's gonna get throughout the cook. So when I combine the wet bulb with the ambient temperature, also called the dry bulb temperature, I can do some complex math and I can get the relative humidity and I can compare the relative humidity of the horizontal smoking with the water pan versus the vertical smoking with no water pan at all. And after an hour, I'm flipping the ribs over and I'm also moving the water pan to one side of the drum to create kind of a cold zone and hot zone. Then I'm gonna rotate the grill grate every 30 minutes so that each of the racks spends some time in the hot zone to crisp up the top of the ribs and get some additional smoke flavor. In the barbecue competition world, I've heard this method called burning and turning and it helps to get a really nice bark without drying out the ribs from the direct heat too much. Now, after three hours total, the ribs are around 160. 65 internal and they have a really nice bark. So I'm wrapping them in foil with some butter on the bottom and some maple syrup and then we're going to put them back on the Bronco to braise them and get them tender with the water pan removed by the way. We don't need that anymore. It's just going to suppress the temperatures unnecessarily. And now after another hour, so we're four hours in total, I'm checking back on them for doneness by carefully unwrapping the foil. I'm probing them and I'm kind of holding them to test them for feel. They should be around 203 degrees internal. They should bend easily in your hands and the meat on top should slightly tear. If it doesn't meet those tests, then I wrap it up and I do the same checks every 15 minutes until each rack is done. This one is done, so I'm removing it from the smoker. The racks will likely finish at different times, so you'll just need to take each one off as it's finished. Just keep that in mind. Next, I'm placing the unwrapped ribs back on the drum and I'm saucing them up with some Blues Hog Tennessee Red. I really love this stuff and I use it in my barbecue competitions. Then they're going to smoke to set up the sauce for another 30 minutes or so. 
Now you'll know they're done when the sauce has kind of dehydrated and tacked up and they have some nice texture and that's it. These ribs are done and they look really good. Now I'm going to refrigerate them for a day while I move on to the vertical rib cook. Just keep in mind what they look like now because during the taste test they've already been refrigerated for a day and they lose a bit of their color so just keep that in mind for later when I do the taste test. Now moving on to the vertical hanging rib cook. I'm also rubbing them with the same rub and I'm weighing them like a barbecue weirdo. I'm also placing a hook on the top and bottom of each rib because I'm going to flip them part way through the cook. I haven't seen anybody on YouTube do this. Maybe there's a video out there. If you guys know of one, drop it in the comments section below and I'll give them credit for it. But I just thought that you're going to get uneven cooking with the ribs hanging so close to the coals. So I thought it might be a good idea to flip them halfway through the cook. A lot of people like to daisy chain the hooks so that the ribs don't fall off. But I figure because I'm not cooking them all the way to tenderness on the hooks and I'm going to wrap them part way through, they'll stay firm enough that only one hook will be fine to actually actually hook it onto the rib hanger. Now I'm hanging them in the Bronco, which I'm running at around 200 degrees, according to the built-in thermometer in the Bronco. The lower the better, because the heat next to the coals is going to be a lot hotter than what the temperature gauge up above reads, so that's why I'm running it at 200. And after roughly another hour and a half, the ribs will reach 165 internal and the bark will have a nice crisped up texture like this. So I'm removing them from the smoker. I'm wrapping them just like I did with the other ribs. And then they're going back on the drum with the deflector plate and grate installed. If you have a lot of ribs, you can just stack them on top of each other like you see me doing here. And checking back in another hour, I'm doing my finishing checks every 15 minutes, just like I did with the horizontal ribs. One rack is done, so I'm saucing it to set the sauce and I'm letting the sauce tack up. Just keep in mind, each rack will probably finish at a different time. So you might have to take one out, sauce it, and then 20 minutes or 15 minutes later, you might have to take the other one out of the wrap and then sauce it. That's just kind of the name of the game with getting the perfect doneness for all of your racks of ribs. And there you have it. Those are some really nice vertically smoked ribs. Now I'm moving on to the taste test. Just again, keep in mind guys that the horizontally smoked ribs looked really good as you saw in this video when I first took them off the smoker. But during the taste test, they look kind of green and weird. And although they taste tasted good, they just didn't have the same appearance as the freshly smoked ribs. So just keep in mind, they did look pretty similar. It's just one has been refrigerated for 24 hours. All right, guys, we're here with all of the ribs. We have the ribs that were cooked horizontally on the top grate and then wrapped like I normally cook ribs on the Oklahoma Joe's Bronco right here. And then we have the hanging ribs right here on my left, your right. So I'm gonna cut into the ribs on my right here first, the ones that were cooked horizontally, and we're gonna see how they taste. Now, the the results of the data were pretty inconclusive. We did get a higher humidity and wet bulb temperature on the horizontal ribs with the water pan below it, probably because there was a giant water pan in there. And when we hung the ribs, we got a much lower wet bulb temperature and relative humidity. That being said, the horizontal ribs that had the water pan in the Bronco didn't lose any more or less weight than the ribs that were hung, contrary to what I thought, because there was a water pan, there was higher humidity, we wrapped them. We retained a lot of moisture, presumably, but that wasn't really the case. Each set of ribs lost a pretty similar amount of weight. So let's cut into the baby back ribs here that were cooked horizontally with the water pan. I'll just take a big double rib and I'll give you guys a look at this rib. It is really juicy. Let's see how it tastes. Perfectly cooked, bite through, almost fall off the bone. Really good consistency, really good flavor. That's a good rib. So the baby backs are looking pretty good on the water pan horizontal method so far. Let's try the spare ribs. This was a smaller rack of spares. I mean, it's almost fallen apart here. So again, we'll get a double and I'll give you guys a look. Now this is a pretty thin rib, but it still looks pretty juicy. Perfectly bite through. It's got a lot of moisture. It's a little bit dry. I think because it's a thin rib, but still really good. Good smoke flavor. Love the sauce on it. Love the rub. It's really well cooked. It's tender. It falls apart in your mouth. So other than a little bit of dryness because this rib was super thin and I cooked it probably a little bit too long, I think the rib is really flavorful. It's got a good smoke flavor and it tastes really good. The tenderness is really good. It just kind of pulls apart on your teeth. It's not too fall apart, but it's also got some bite. So. Let's move on to the hanging ribs. This is the baby back rack that was hung. I'll give you guys a look. Now this is a pretty thin baby back, but that's got a lot of moisture in it actually. 
Nice bite through consistency, really tasty. A little bit drier than the baby backs that were cooked horizontally with the water pan. But the difference with these is in addition to the smoke flavor, they have that kind of burnt fat flavor that you get because all of the fat from the ribs was dripping down onto the coals. It was vaporizing and it was attaching to the ribs and you really get that flavor coming through. So I think that's why a lot of people like drum smokers because you get that grilled meat flavor on the ribs and whatever other meat you're cooking. And lastly, we'll take a look at the spares that were cooked hanging in the smoker. I'll give you guys a look here. It looks pretty juicy actually. Mmm. That one was definitely my favorite. I had to pause to eat the entire rib because it was so tasty. It was juicy, I think, because it was a really thick rack of spares and it had that grilled meat flavor on it that really elevates the flavor. So I'd say in conclusion for this video, any method that you use to cook ribs on a drum smoker is viable. I think that if you're hanging ribs, you have to baby them a little bit more, keep the temperatures low and flip them around midway through the cook so that they cook more evenly. But if you hang them up to 165, 170, and then you wrap them to finish them and then you put them back on the smoker to get some more smoke. I think that's a really viable way to smoke ribs. You can smoke a lot more on the Oklahoma Joe's Bronco and any drum smoker if you're hanging ribs because you're making more use of the room in the smoker and you get that really excellent, delicious smoked meat flavor from all of the fat that's dripping on the coals. So it's a really good method. With the horizontal method, you're not able to cook as many ribs, maybe two to three max. And it doesn't necessarily mean that you're gonna get more moisture in your ribs at the end of the day. But I think the main benefit of the horizontal ribs in the smoker with the water pan below is that it's really easy for someone that doesn't have a lot of time to babysit their ribs to just set it and forget it. You don't have to worry about the hanging ribs getting too burnt because you left them in too long and the temperature got too high. You don't have to worry about uneven cooking. It's just really even temperatures and you still get a really good final result. So it all depends on what you're looking for. The one thing it doesn't have is the grilled meat flavor from the fat dripping on the coals. But as you saw earlier in this video, you could start with the water pan to one side of the drum, and then you can have one rack of ribs exposed, dripping fat onto the coals directly, and that will create that grilled meat flavor while still having a water pan. You just have to turn the grate more often to expose one rack of ribs and then put it over the water pan so the other rack has some time over top of those coals directly to get some of that grilled meat flavor. And I think that's a really good method of cooking ribs as well. So thanks so much for watching, guys. If you have any ideas, Ideas for future Smoke Lab experiments, drop them in the comments section below. Make sure to subscribe to the Oklahoma Joe's YouTube channel, and I will see you in the next video. Happy smoking.